Hi everyone, welcome back to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for tuning in for the Wednesday News and Politics 4 p.m. show. Just talked a little bit about the stock market with John Kazmarski with Efficient Capital Strategies. Now we're going to talk education. I'd like to welcome in my next guest, Dr. Pamela McHugh with the Rhode Island Nursing Institute Middle College. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Kate. So happy to be here. I appreciate your coming here, not too far from the school. Lots of talk in the education arena here in the state in the last few weeks between test scores and the new report card today. But let's introduce you to folks and let's introduce the Nursing Institute Middle College a little bit to folks who might want to know a little more. Well, thank you. Yes, the Rhode Island Nurses Institute Middle College was um, created in 2011, and we are a charter high school preparing nurses, to uh, preparing high school students to become registered nurses, to pursue that career in college. Now, we don't have enough nurses in the state, and it's not just about the nurses, it's the composition of the workforce. Mm. Um, we know that patients do better when nurses understand their language, uh, food preferences, their culture, their religious customs. So when we look at filling that shortage um, and we look at the composition, we didn't have the diversity that we needed to to really impact patient care. Thus, we created the Rhode Island Nurses Institute Middle College. And so let's talk a little bit about that. You mentioned that diversity standpoint, and as we look at a population that's continually to get more diverse, what does the school look like from a, a diverse uh, from the composition? Well, we are very diverse. We're meeting our mission, um, especially with race, ethnicity. Um, we particularly um, serve students from our urban core. And many students never thought about college, let alone becoming a nurse. Mm -hmm. And many are first generation um, college bound, though we are still predominantly female. That is one area we do um, are still working on. There's lots of opportunities for males in nursing as well. So what came out today from the Rhode Island Department of Education was a new report card assessing schools across the state with a number of criteria. And this is the first time this STAR-based system was approached and pretty much gives schools that baseline of which to work from now moving forward. Predominantly, so it's a five-star system. Most of them are in the middle, few at the high end, and a lot at the lower end. So let's talk about your reaction when you saw what the assessment was from Rye today. And what do you think it accurately captured? And what do you think that it's not necessarily, as you said, because of the unique mission of the nursing, the Nurses Institute? Well, data-driven metrics, accountability, quality indicators, so very important. So yes, we applaud the Rhode Island Department of Education um, for creating metrics, um, and they will be helpful in strategic improvements. Mm. That being said, we have at Rhode Island Nurses Institute Middle College, we are a unique school. We are the only middle college in the state and the only nursing high school. We happen to be a CTE approved program as well, dedicated with a specific mission. So we, our challenge um, is that we do not think the report card um, accurately reflects our performance because of the unique model design and the very mission-specific um, goal of the school. But one of the things that happened from this report card is those schools that needed additional resources, I did see on the report card, identified the school for comprehensive support. Have you talked with folks at Ride as they said, here's how we can potentially give some assistance, but I'm assuming this is going to be a conversation, as you said, identifying the unique needs of the school. Yes. I. I I do not know the specifics, okay. nor have they been released on how that support will be done. However, um, we are informed, um, unlike previous accountability reports, um, that the school will have more of a say, that, um, that we will be able to um, uh, be active participants in, in these strategic improvements and that it will be um, school specific. Okay. Uh, that's what I'm looking forward to. What would you say are the biggest challenges for your students when they come to the school, as you said, preparing for potentially a career in nursing to go to a higher education program and enter the workforce? What are the biggest challenges specifically for students as they look to pursue a career in nursing? Well, one of the, the biggest challenges that we have is the, the academic preparation along the pipeline. Mm -hmm. uh, we consider our program a pre-collegiate pipeline. And originally, our original model design, um, when we opened the school, is we thought 
students will have ninth grade in their home district mm -hmm. and then in 10th grade they will come to us and we will really build upon that foundation and in our course of study it's workforce certificates the kids take college courses and they learn nursing um, specific um, knowledge terminology however we had already reconfigured that design um, because um, the ninth grade that we thought we'd build the foundation, um, the kids didn't have the um, academic um, foundation. So in 2016, we had to reorganize and change the model to a 9 to 12th grade. So now that you have the students coming in again for the ninth to really start them there as well, it's just shifting it down some as well because I'm sure that there's students who come in from challenges from the six through eight school model when they come into the ninth is, is a lot of the ninth grade would you say really focusing on the basics yes we're definitely um, focusing on the basics the core academic subjects um, and, and we see very promising results now that we start the academic preparation earlier mm -hmm. with us in the nursing model unfortunately the, the recently um, released accountability report doesn't reflect that transition. That's an old model where students came to us in the 10th grade. Mm. We had to do a lot of um, foundational work and they graduated in the 12th plus. So that's where we feel that we've already reorganized. We're very data driven as healthcare is. And if something doesn't work, we don't wait three or four years to change it. We make it happen. And as you mentioned, again, going from that 10th grade to starting at the 9th grade, having that system in place. What do you envision moving forward? Do you think that that construct uh, is what you're going to pursue? Uh, or can it change? Uh, do you envision the possibility to be open to potential for a tweaking of that moving forward? Well, we know the 9th through 12th model absolutely works. And in fact, another con challenge we have with the report card on a graduation rate um, in which we were uh, um, identified as improvement is that we had a graduation rate which we calculated differently but those students graduated with up to 20 college credits they were CNAs and EMTs um, and they had 70 percent of them enrolled in college immediately after high school so that that one number of graduation rate that's what I feel doesn't capture there are other challenge that we may see this as an opportunity is that you know, we're a charter school. So students, um, we don't know their academic performance before they come to us. And um, we often find students um, are more interested in going to a charter school rather than becoming a nurse. And we are all nursing, nothing but nursing. That's what you get here. And we only have one path. So when you're not all in nursing and you find out it's not a fit, yet you're not sure where else to go or your parents really want you to go to this really nice, small, supportive school and you're not into it, that's a challenge. It can be difficult. Um, you know, is there a process to help those students? As you said, you don't quite know. Are they just waiting it out, trying to get through the 12 program. I, you know, that happens at every school, but here's a unique one that says it's either you're all in or out. Um, you know, how do you, it's, it's tough. I mean, we're talking about 14 year olds, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that are thinking that maybe this might be a career path that they want to pursue. I mean, what do you, how do you talk with those students when you've identified them, first of all? Um, is it really sort of that you should, uh, I mean, it's hard for college freshmen to say, here's what I want to major in. Again, back it up another four years. Um, you know, what are those conversations like with students saying, you know, is nursing really for you? Well, we do have that. And, and not on this report, but previously, um, attrition rate has already always been looked at. Mm. And students would come to us within the first year and they would find out it's not a fit. And so they have the choice to go back to the home district. Mm. We think it's a good thing to find out what you don't want to do <laughs> at 15 yeah. rather than at 24. Um, so, so yes, those are students who identify early on. But as I said before, we are, um, we are uh, working with students who maybe the neighborhood um, high school is not as safe as their parents think that it is. Mm. Or um, we are a small supportive school, very nurturing, full of nurses. And um, it almost has a private school feeling. Um, so parents, they say, you know what? They really not like going to be a nurse, <laughs> but we want them here. And we understand that, 
But we also try to say if, then, if the students don't really want it, they can't be forced into this. Not everybody wants nor should be a nurse. Don't, I couldn't have gone to an accounting school. <laughs> I certainly know where you're coming from with, with that. And you know, you talk about the numbers of nurses needed moving forward. Um, I mean, do we have, I don't want to put you on the spot, but that data, I mean, how much of there is a shortage for nurses, both statewide and across the country? Well, um, in Rhode Island, Department of Labor and Training says we're going to need 4,000 more nurses by the year 2026. And the reason it's to fill traditional roles, as you would think, nurses, hospitals, and healthcare organizations. But as we move to more of a prevention focus, mm. and baby boomers are aging and sometimes living um, longer with chronic illnesses, we find out that we can't always have the patients come to us. We need to go where the patients are if we're really going to make an impact or improving health outcomes in the state. That's why we need more nurses. You talk about going to where the patients are in preventative, um, you know, is that from a, a doctor's office model? Is it, is, it, is it taking a look at aging healthcare differently? Well, that is uh, looking at how do we have the best outcomes. And um, patients don't always um, know where to go, have mm -hmm. access where to go. Um, so this is a great opportunity for nursing to be in the community. Cash can be in the home care in the churches, mm. care in the community settings. Um, that's where, and there we see brand new roles for nurses that we've never envisioned before. And that's what we're preparing the future nursing workforce for. Anything else you'd like to share while we have you here in studio about the school, uh, about the assessment, and uh, anything moving forward as we're heading into 2019? Thank you, yes, I just, um, our graduates, our program built into our program is uh, uh, high rigorous um, graduation requirements. It's college prep, integrating healthcare and nursing knowledge. Our students begin to take college courses beginning in 10th grade and they earn a workforce certificate. We have a CNA program, an EMT program, and we just recently were funded to create a certified patient care technician program. Those pathways in themselves are in high demand in Rhode Island, but they're entry level. So if you earn these certificates in high school and you already have workforce experience, it's just going to make the college journey easier and that you can afford it. Well, I appreciate your taking the time to come in today, talk with us a little bit about the school, a little bit about the assessments and the industry in general. We love talking about education here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. So Dr. Pamela McHugh, thank you so much for coming thank in. Thank you. I appreciate it. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back here in downtown Providence. We'll be right back. <laughs>